Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about the oculomotor, trochlear, and abducens nerve section of the course pack. This resource is brought to you by Scrubs, which is the Student Collaborative Resources for Understanding and Brody Success. My name is Bryce Pugh and I'm in the class of 2027. So we'll begin with the Scrubs mission statement. Scrubs is a student-driven initiative that aims to develop supplemental resources for current and future cohorts that will pass through Brody. Members of Scrubs participate in a variety of subcommittees working to create resources for students by students. These resources aim to offer unique perspectives from students that have walked in the same shoes, developing resources that we wish we'd been exposed to during our time in the course. The hope is that this organization will continue to become a staple of the Brody student body, exemplifying the unique collaborative community that Brody offers. If this is a mission that aligns with your goals and you have the desire to help those that will come behind you, as well as the goal to leave your mark on Brody as a whole, we invite you to join the team. As always, a quick disclaimer. The resources that are included in this document are made by students and not the faculty, as such as possibility for error in our development, although this is mitigated via a team approach to development with multiple stages of vetting. If there's a contradiction within the coursework presented within your course, please go by the course documents. Additionally, Scrubs aims to, to supply supplemental resources, however these are in no way a replacement to the instruction of the Brody faculty. Use these resources as a supplement, but not as your primary source for course material. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at all the nerves that go to the eye, all the cranial nerves. And so fortunately, they all pass through the same frame in here. So it's going to be the superior orbital fissure. And so we're looking at cranial nerves 3, 4, 6. Remember, 5 is trigeminal, so 3, 4, 6. And that's going to pass through the superior orbital fissure right here, right under the uh, wing of the sphenoid bone. And so looking at the brain that would be overlaying in this region, this is where they're going to come off. We have the oculomotor, cranial nerve 3, right here. We have abducens, cranial nerve 6, back here. And then we have our trochlear nerve wrapping around here. And so before we actually get into that, let's look at the cavernous sinus, which is going to be a relevant topic that we talked about, or that we talk about. And so um, in previous chapters, we looked at the dural venous sinuses, which you can see pictured in here. And so like the superior will come down here, it's going to wrap around, and eventually we'll get to this region and that's going to be the cavernous sinus, which is kind of the spider web intertangling of sinus. So if we take this cross section here and amplify it right here, you can see that. And so we have our pituitary gland sitting right here. And then we have our sphenoidal sinus sitting right below it. And then kind of in between next to those is going to be our cavernous sinus. Um, and this is really important because there's a lot of nerves, a lot of cranial nerves that run through here, as well as the internal carotid artery. And so if you get infection in here, which can, uh, which can happen because uh, infection travels through the dural venous sinuses a lot, then that can cause edema or swelling here that can squish up against the nerves and cause deficits. And so you'll want to remember which ones are located where. And here's a couple of pictures I've drawn just to give you an idea. So starting with this one, you have your pituitary, sphenoid, and then um, from top to bottom on the lateral side, you're going to have three, four, five and you only have V1 and V2, not V3. And then we have, uh, go over a little more medial, you have six, and then you have the internal carotid. And so another mnemonic that people use to remember this is O-Tom cat. So you have O-Tom, so this would be the other side. This one's like on the left, this one's on the right. So O-Tom, oculomotor, trochlear, ophthalmic, V1, maxillary, V2, and then cat. We have abducens, carotid, which internal carotid specifically. And so that's medial to lateral, superior to inferior. And so it's basically cranial nerves 3 through 6, except for V3. And so now before we look at the nerves, let's look at the muscles of the eye, because I think that's going to make the nerves a lot easier. And the, the nerves will also make the muscles a lot easier. So there's going to be two types of muscles with one extra one. So uh, first, let's look at the levator palpebrae superioris. So that's a big mouthful. That's the hardest one to remember, but once you get it, it kind of stands out. And so this is going to be one big muscle that runs over the top. And so what it's going to do is it's going to levator elevate palpebrae. I think of that like palpating. So it's going to be your eyelids superioris. It's superior. So this is going to lift your upper eyelid. Excluding that one, we're going to have four straight muscles on each side, top and bottom, and then we're going to have two oblique muscles, which come up and wrap around. And so uh, this is going to give you a good idea to the function, and I think the eye muscles make a lot of sense. So after this video, hopefully you can have a good idea of what all of this does. And so 
um, the straight muscles are going to be named based on where they are with rectus. And so rectus comes from the root meaning straight. Um, you can think like erect, straight. And so top, we have our superior rectus, inferior rectus, our lateral rectus, and then the medial rectus would be this pink one on the other side. We also have these two curved muscles, which are going to be the oblique muscles. And they're oblique because they curve. And so you can see this one on the top, we have our superior oblique comes up and curves, and our inferior oblique will come down the other side and curve and wrap around here. And so when looking at innervation of these, we're going to look at trochlear nerve does one, abducens nerve does one, and then oculomotor does the rest. So you can think oculomotor, eye motor, that's going to do most of them. And now when remembering these, what's going to be really helpful is remembering the function of the muscles. And so first, let's actually look at the abducens muscle. Or actually, let's just go over the function. So um, our lateral rectus, remember, all muscles do is pull. So if we're inserting right here on the eyeball, and we're originating back here, if we pull this way, assuming this is the right eye, then that's going to abduct this from the midline. So it's going to move it laterally. If we pull on the other side, that's going to pull the eye that way. If we pull on this one in the top, it's going to pull the eye up. If we pull on the one on the bottom, it's going to pull the eye down. And we'll look at those more later. But just to give you an idea, so our abducens nerve, it's in the name. It tells you it's going to abduct the eye. Which muscle would you think abducts the eye? The one on the lateral side. Lateral pulling away from midline is abducting the eye. So that's the abducens, cranial nerve 6. Our trochlear nerve, you might be thinking, well, I don't know what that one does. This little loop right here that holds the muscle that it wraps around, this loop is called a trochlea. And so the superior oblique is going to go wrap around the trochlea and then go up here. So that's the one that's innervated by the trochlear nerve. Next we have our oculomotor nerve, which is going to do everything else. And so if you just remember those two, you can remember this is everything else. And so including this uh, weird one here. So abducens, abducts the eye, trochlear nerve wraps around the trochlea or it innervates the muscle that wraps around the trochlea. Next, let's look at the nerves in a little more depth. Let's look at their pathway. And so um, these are some details about cranial nerve three. So we'll look at that one last. So they're all gonna have pretty similar pathways. So I've drawn them in, in one drawing here. And so they're all gonna come off the brain and pass through the superior orbital fissure, like we mentioned, and then go to their spots. So our trochlear nerve, it's gonna go through here and go to our superior oblique muscle and that's all we care about. And so what kind of component do you think it's going to have? Well, it's going to a muscle, making the muscle move. So that's got to be somatic, intentional, and efferent, sending a motor signal. So we only have GSE to the superior oblique. Abducens is the same thing, just GSE to the lateral rectus muscle. Oculomotor gets a little more complicated. So we have, uh, oh, sorry, I didn't point out um, these just come from the trochlear nucleus is the trochlear one, abducens nucleus. So they're just named for what they are. Oculomotor has an oculomotor nucleus, but we also have the Edinger-Westfall nucleus. And so you'll look a lot, uh, you'll look at that a lot more in neuro. Right now you just uh, need to know the oculomotor has both of these, and you can look at, uh, this is going to be parasympathetic as well. And so they're going to join together in the brain, brain stem, and then they're going to come out here, and they're going to pass through the superior orbital fissure, and then they're going to split into a superior division and an inferior division. Our superior division is going to go to the two muscles that have superior in their name. So superior rectus, levator palpebrae superioris. So the superior division literally goes superiorly to the two superior muscles. Our inferior division will do everything else. And, and again, you can see GSE because we're just doing uh, motor muscle. The inferior division down here, we're going to split. We're going to have our GSE and GVE break apart. So our GSE is going to go to the medial rectus, inferior rectus, and inferior oblique. So that's the rest of the muscles we've talked about. So that's everything. Um, that's all GSE. Now we also have this little branch that I talked about. This is going to be the short root of the ciliary ganglion. So this is GVE. And so this is going to come off, and it's going to have the ciliary ganglion, which is structurally attached to V1, cranial nerve 5, but functionally attached right here. And so the short root goes here. And then we have our short ciliary nerve, which continues from that. And that's going to go to a few other muscles. So this is going to have 
sympathetic components where it was joined by uh, sympathetics from the internal carotid, and we're going to have parasympathetics. The sympathetics are going to go to the dilator pupillae. So from that name, what would you think that does? It's going to dilate the pupils. Oh, funny, the parasympathetics do a constrictor pupillae, so that's going to constrict the pupils. Well, how do I remember which one's which? Well, what I like to think is sympathetic, that's your fight or flight. So if a bear is chasing you, you're going to activate sympathetics. You're going to activate fight or flight. And so if a bear is chasing me, I want to be aware of my surroundings. I want to see everything that's going on. So I'm going to dilate my pupils. They're going to expand so I can allow for more light to come in and I can see more things. Parasympathetics, if I'm just hanging out in my room recording an anatomy video, then I don't need to be seeing as much. I don't need to be dilating my pupils so I can allow them to constrict a little bit. Um, and that's how I remember that. The parasympathetics, they also do the ciliary body, which is just uh, a short group of muscles in your eye. Okay, and a couple things I wanna point out, this is where they're gonna be located on the brain. So your oculomotor is gonna be right here. This is an important one to know, like of all of them, this is one of the most important location-wise for this class because it has an important relationship between our posterior cerebral artery and our superior cerebellar artery because it's gonna come up right between those two. We can see that over here too. It's a little more squished, but we have our superior cerebellar our posterior cerebral running back there, and then our oculomotor coming up right here. Same thing on this side, oculomotor running between the two. We have our abducens down here, which runs between the acha and then a smaller artery that's just past that so you don't really need to know. I think it's called the labyrinthian artery or something, but that's gonna be right here between our acha and that artery. So right here between our acha. And you might say, well, how do I know this is not the pica and that's the acha? Well, one, that's in front of it, but two, you come down here, you can see the pica's coming off the vertebral. So we're on the basilar, acha, abducens. The trochlear, you can see, is gonna be wrapping around right here. Um, you're probably not gonna be able to see that here, maybe one of these small ones, but it's primarily located on the back of the brainstem here, so you won't really be able to see that one. I also wanna point out, I'm not gonna go through all this right now, but this is what the orbit is gonna look like when it's dissected in class. And so you want to get familiar with this. They're going to tag stuff on this. And so you want to get familiar with this view, what's medial, what's lateral. You want to look at the branches of the trigeminal that come over here. You want to look at um, the ones in this video that we're talking about that you can be seen here, the muscles, all of that stuff. You see the trochlea right here, the superior oblique. So get familiar with this view, um, have the professors walk you through it, through the prosections or dissections. And that's going to be really important. And so now let's move on to the, the movements of the eye as the last section before clinical. And so movements of the eye, you can kind of imagine what they're going to be because you can move your eyes. But we're going to have three axes. We're going to have a vertical, so up and down, horizontal, left and right, and anterior posterior, which is sagittal. So that one's a little more complicated. But essentially, our primary position is going to have this midline here. If we adduct, adduct, add to our body, we're moving towards the midline. If we abduct, abduct, that's moving away from the midline. And so this is going to be an important relationship in the future um, for neuro and stuff. If you abduct one eye, it's going to send a signal to adduct the other eye. Um, hopefully you're not abducting both eyes, um, unless you got a cool trick. But elevation is our next one, going up, depression, going down. And then this picture says extorsion and intorsion, but I think the course pack uses... Uh, medial rotation and lateral rotation. So medial would be intorsion, lateral would be extorsion. And so we have these three axes. Our medial and lateral rectus are the only ones that can directly move on, the, on an axis. And so that's going to be our horizontal axis, abduction, adduction. Medial and lateral rectus are the only ones that can do just that. Our other muscles are not exactly parallel to an axis of the eyeball. So our superior and inferior rectus muscles are not directly on the top. So our superior is not right here. It's actually a little bit over here. Um, I guess it would be on this one. It's a little over here. And so what happens if you activate your superior rectus, it's gonna elevate and adduct a little because it's right here, so it's gonna pull that way. And so what happens is if you wanna go straight up, you're not just doing superior rectus, you're activating 
a few muscles to cancel out some of these other actions and that'll pull it straight up. And so I listed here the other four muscles, their primary, secondary, and tertiary function. And so uh, superior rectus, inferior rectus, you can guess their primary one is going to be what they are. Um, I'll move on. The superior oblique and inferior oblique are a little complicated. So this might be a really helpful picture to look at. So the superior oblique, that's going to move down and out. And so that might seem a little confusing. Um, but remember, it's kind of rotating the eye primarily. So let's see, superior oblique, depress, abduct, meter rotate. And so it's coming down here, wraps around. So if it pulls the eye and rotates it, then it's going to do that way. So I would study this picture, make sure you know the movements really well and know uh, which muscle has primary, secondary, and tertiary functions. And then finally, let's look at some clinical anatomy. So um, for each nerve, of course, if you have a lesion on it, then you're going to lose function of that nerve. Um, but specifically, there's some cases we want to look at. So oculomotor nerve, this can typically be lesioned if you have an aneurysm in a nearby vessel, which we saw here, the oculomotor is there. If you have like a PCA, posterior cerebral artery lesion, then that can push up against it. So this is right between that. If those push against it, that's not great. You can compress it. And what happens with that is you can't elevate or adduct the affected eye. And so that's going to end up with this down and out look here. Um, that'll give you some symptoms like diplopia, double vision, drooped eyelid, uh, dilated, unresponsive pupil. So it'll look like that. And the reason that this happens is because oculomotor, you might be saying, oh, that doesn't do the superior oblique, which does this movement. Why is it doing that? And so what happens is if you can't send a signal, all the other muscles or all the muscles that the oculomotor does is going to be paralyzed. And so you'll have hyperactivation of the other ones, or I guess uninhibited activation. So it'll be kind of abducens pulling a little that way and then uh, superior oblique kind of pulling this way. So you get looking here because all the other directions are inhibited. Next, we have the trochlear nerve. And what happens is if you have a lesion here, this is going to limit depression of the eyeball. So looking down, you can't look down. And uh, almost always, if this gets asked in the question, let's say a patient presents, they have difficulty walking down the stairs. This is because they can't really look down. And so if they have trouble walking down the stairs, you want to be thinking trochlear nerve lesion. Finally, abducens nerve. So remember this abducts the eye. And so if that gets lesioned, it prevents abduction of the eye. And this can happen a lot in skull-based fractures. And then the last one we're going to talk about is Horner's syndrome. This is a really big one. Um, moving forward for a lot of other classes, this is going to be really big, really important. So make sure, make sure you learn this. And um, what it is, is it's injury to the cervical sympathetic nerve. So this is loss of sympathetic tone or sympathetic activation. And so if we only have parasympathetics because no sympathetic, we're going to constrict our pupils. We talked about that earlier. Constrict our pupils. Our eyelid is going to droop. And then we're going to have vasodilation or drying of the face. But the big ones are going to be constricted pupils and drooping eyelid.